Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss squatting while flat footed. Now, I received a question on one of my videos in regards to if there are any tools or methods to squatting or doing any type of lunging movement while having flat feet and how do you handle the transition uh, of doing that exercise. And first of all, I'd like to explain that as long as you understand that the foot is a suspension system or a suspension mechanism for the body, then it will be a lot easier for you to get the rest of the references that I'll be detailing in this video. So first understand that the foot is built to rebound and therefore it will compress when under load and it will suspend when it is without load. And that's why I try to have my clients focus on one, not just getting the foot stronger, but alleviating the pressure on the foot by losing some unneeded weight. Now, let's go into this. The foot, the angle position, as I'll show you from behind, in order for you to supinate or to have a balanced foot, balanced posture, your foot has to be in alignment with the ankle and therefore with the tibia. So all three should be in alignment. A lot of times when you have pronation of the foot, what happens is that the ankle is inverted and therefore is unable to fall in line with the heel and the overall path of the tibia. So what happens is that we have it out of balance. We have the tibias coming in while the heels are going out and then the ankle is in the middle being stressed. And this is further exacerbated when you're wearing conventional shoes and now you have a sole that is above, um, high above the ground and then your pronated ankle is then suspended over that sole which is not built to cover the amount of real estate that your foot has. Now, once you understand that and understand that this is a rebounding mechanism, the foot that is, then you'll understand why it is very detrimental to wear conventional shoes. So in this video, I'm going to explain a few details on how you can develop foot strength while weight training. Now, as I've explained, once you put a heavy enough load, your suspension system will sag. The analogy is best to put towards a car a car that is carrying a heavy load or a truck that has a heavy load, the suspension is still able to work or operate, but it doesn't have the same amount of travel because of the load that is in the truck. So if we can lessen the load that's on the, on the truck, the suspension will provide more dampening and rebounding. Now, if that's understood and you're taking the attempts to lose weight, to therefore alleviate that pressure on your foot, now is the time to strengthen the foot. And how do we do that? When considering you're trying to counteract the pronation of your foot. So in order to squat effectively, first you must be either barefoot or wearing a minimalist shoe. I would prefer barefoot. Uh, that is the best way, is the most natural way. And if you find other uh, great power lifters and great uh, athletes, you'll find that they train barefoot to get the best proprioception so you can understand where your foot is on the ground and how it's positioned. So because of that, I'll be going barefoot also. So let's get these off. Okay. So I'm going to display now, I'll give you close-ups also. Now this is the foot, remember we're practicing immediately to bring our foot always into the short foot position. And the short foot position is a proprioceptive action to help not only strengthen that alignment or to form that alignment, but to also put it under some dynamic load by putting a lacrosse ball between your feet and then raising. That's how we get that eversion taken care of and we're able to invert the ankles by lifting instead of the eversion that is happening when we are pronated. Eversion, inversion. Eversion, inversion. Pronation, supination. So when we're doing the squat, our focus should solely be on supinating, to go on the outer edge of the foot. Think along sensory-wise, along the pinky 
to the heel and try to get on that edge as best as you can and then fall into the squat. Okay? So again, short foot. Position, be careful. Now this exercise probably will be best done wearing spacers so you don't develop kind of a clawed uh, toe position, but the idea is to fall while into the squat, while supinated, keeping the ball of your feet, your pinky, and your heel down while performing the short foot. Okay? Now, if you find that you have any issue doing this in terms of pain or range of motion, it is primarily because you need to stretch in some capacity. Maybe trying to attempt stretching into a middle split or a front split will alleviate that, or even the pancake stretch will also help with that, giving you more flexibility, more mobility, and able to keep this position while you squat. Okay, so if you need to come out further, do that. But remember, we're trying to basically cup the foot. Drop down, come back up. Right? Now, if this all changes once you put load on your back. Here we have a barbell. While not loaded, to uh, an extreme amount, you can see that already you're feeling a little pressure and once the weight reaches a certain level, you'll find that you will no longer focus on actually keeping this short foot position and you'll just flatten out the foot. Why? Because you're looking for stability, the weight is, for lack of a better word, dangerous at a certain point and therefore you're trying to get as much stability as you can and you're not really thinking about performing an exercise to help stabilize your ankle. Now, that's why you cannot go up in weight past your ability to control your feet. Once you're doing that, your focus will be primarily on staying alive. That means not being injured by the weight falling. So you're gonna stabilize with all that you can, which is a full flat foot on the ground. So we're gonna avoid that. So we're not gonna put any more much more weight on our back than we can handle keeping our foot in short foot position. So we're going down, keeping that down, going on the edge of our feet, keeping that position. Now what you'll find is as you build confidence and proprioception by doing this, that it will become easier and that when you can slowly, gradually raise the weight and maintain it. Now this is going to follow the protocol of progressive overload. So we're not going to do this exercise every day. We're gonna allow the body to go through some stress, then we're gonna allow it to recover, and then give it some more stress as it has healed. So we're not gonna run into this. This is something that you have to have a program for. Now, while you may want to squat and to put load on your back, I find that this is not the best exercise. If you already have pronation, pronated feet and you have not found a way to take care of it, more than likely you have a balance issue, a uh, stretching issue, or a mobility issue. So let's take care of that first. And the best way to take care of mobility and balance along with strength is to do unilateral exercises. So the first exercise, or the only, and the best exercise to, elite, uh, to create squat strength while rehabilitating a severely pronated foot is to do unilateral squats, leg lunges, split squats. And what you'll find is as, as I lunge, as I get into the lunge position, that my foot will need to balance, right? So I can't just lay it flat down while trying to balance, what you'll find is that my foot is constantly looking for a neutral point, a point of balance, a point of strength. And therefore, once you're going down on one foot and you're able to keep somewhat of a short foot position, you are by then in turn strengthening that foot's ability to stay in a balanced position. So my recommendation is to do body weight lunges, 
for as many reps as you can handle. In the beginning, let's start right with a realistic number, maybe 15, 16 steps. Then you can go on to then have it weighted. And by the time you know it, by the time you have two plates on the bar of 45 pounds and you're unilaterally lunging, you'll find that your foot is in a far better position than when you started. And that is a quick and easy way to develop leg strength and squat strength while also developing the power of your feet. In fact, the unilateral lunge split squat is the best exercise you could do. In fact, all of my clients do it whether they have pronated feet or not because of the, the benefit through uh, the multifaceted advantages of training your flexibility, stability, and strength at the same time. Now, another issue that you may find is your proprioception of what it feels like. Where are we landing? We want to land on the fourth and fifth toe. We want to land or feel on the ball of our foot, and we want to feel on our heel. So these are the three points of contact that are imperative for you to imagine or feel the sensation of touching. That those three pieces should be in contact at all times. Now, for some people, depending on the configuration of their foot, they may feel out on this outer edge, they may feel contact with that also, and that might be a fourth point for some people, especially if you have very wide feet, and that should also be considered. But the main three points of contact Heel, big toe, fourth and fifth toe, or basically the pinky toe, but you don't want to put it too far to the edge. And then practice doing lunges while in that position. As you see, the body finding its position when it's just on the heel, right? Then you put that four, um, pinky toe down, then you put the heel down. Now it's stabilized. Now we can go down. Okay? Now, we look, look as I go down. Get in this video. Let's see. Look at my foot. Look as I go down. Look at that. Right? I can let it pronate, collapse, or I can keep it in that supinated position, feel the pressure down, and go down. Okay? Don't worry, don't mind me. I'm a little tired. It's probably the third take of this video, but that is basically what we're getting at. Hold that position. Create strength through the adductors by using it unilaterally, and therefore, you will also help your tibialis because that is the main weak factor of this. The adductor and the tibialis anterior are the two weak points that we're going to have, and those are major stability muscles. So once we're able to take care of those, then we'll get to the real core of the issue and solve the overpronated feet or the severely pronated feet. Now, once you have developed the proprioception, which means feeling, basically, then you can go on to do split squats, lunges, jumping squats to create more of a dynamic effort on your body to put it through different positions and phases of training. And you'll find that you'll alleviate a lot of problems. Uh, majority of my clients have a very stiff groin, or <laughs> lack of uh, a better term, a inflexible groin area. And that's usually because they're always sunken in this position. The, the pronation of their feet falls inwards and therefore they never really strengthen the adductors and allow for the stability while the legs are stretched apart or spread apart. Now for ankle position, once you focus on staying supinated and on the heel, you'll find that your ankle will be in line with your heel and your tibia. And that is really what you call ankle stacking. And once you have that position and you can keep that position, you will be able to perform better squats, better movements overall, plyometrics, whatever it is that you're looking for. Once you've developed the ability to get into that position, and stay in that position, you will therefore gain better aptitude at doing all these other movements. So understand that ankle stability is a major block of improvement. That's where all your foot gains will come from. And the first way to alleviate any ankle
pronation is by coming out of conventional shoes that are putting your instep over the edge of the insole. So by that, once we're flat on the ground like I am now, now we're, we're starting from the proper starting point. This is the proper range to start with and now nothing is able to pronate over a uh, elevated surface. I am on the surface. I am one with the surface. And from there we can start to strengthen ourselves. Now, as you can see, when pronated, ankle goes in. When supinated, ankle comes outwards and it stays in line. Now the idea is we don't want to go too far. That's too much. But if we can just keep it neutral, find where neutral is. And the best way for you to do this is to go in front of a mirror, turn around, or maybe have someone take a picture of you from the rear and see how aligned your ankles are. If they're like this and the ankles are coming in, right, from here, as you can see, you're in trouble. Once you get them out and aligned, that is the right position. And from the front, once you've aligned them, you may find that even your, the balls of your big toe are off of the floor. Never mind. What we can do while it's in that position, as long as you understand it, you can put the other foot in front of it. And then you're just going to hold on to a post and step down onto that foot. Kick my ankle straight and then I will step down on my heel and push it down. Do you see that? Instant arch, right? But not instant permanent results. This is temporary. Once I leave, bring that foot above, then the, big, the ball of my foot will rise off of the ground. So what we want to do is practice pressing down. Think of sort of it as training the foot into its position. And this can be done on a daily basis. And keep it. And yeah, it's going to stretch. It's going to hurt for a bit. It's going to be a... a, a <laughs> it's not going to be pleasant. But if you practice getting the ankle straight, in line, and then pressing this down, because what you don't understand is that with 33 joints, it's made to be flexible. This suspension system has many components to be flexible. And as you can tell from different traditions, such as uh, uh, lotus foot binding uh, from China, or even our own version of foot binding in conventional shoes, where now we have a sort of banana-shaped foot, uh, that's caused solely from the shoes that we're wearing. And all of the toes converge at a point. That is basically a modern day version of foot binding that has happened because of the shoes that we are wearing as uh, conventional shoes. So understand that, have your feet everted, bring it down, bring down. So you'd want to step basically over your big toe and hold that down while keeping your ankle straight as possible. And with time, you'll find that your body will, that big, the ball of your big toe will touch the ground while simultaneously your ankle will be in line with your heel. So that's the goal. And that's going to take a lot of work. But if you want to alleviate a lot of the pain that you're going through from having pronated feet, this may be your only choice. Again, this was a quick episode. Uh, I hope you guys are doing the exercises that I've asked. I hope you're seeing great gains and improvement. If you're not seeing it on the strength from your feet, you may consider losing some unnecessary weight so you can alleviate the load on your suspension system. And if you've done both of those, now is the time to go more advanced in alleviating your flat feet by doing unilateral leg work.